guys, welcome back to my channel. Wait, isn't this my channel? Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Hi, friends. Hi. <laughs> welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Girl Boss Chat with Wendy, where I would invite a special guest every month to talk about her journey in becoming a badass girl boss. So this month, I have MJ over here. Hi! She is an international DJ based in Malaysia right now and she is also a fitness instructor. So MJ, yes. how long have you been a DJ actually? Uh, I've been a DJ for 7 years now. Ooh, 7 years? That's, that's a long time. Yeah. I actually didn't realize that but how did you get started with being a DJ? Okay, because um, both Wendy mm -hmm. and I, we are both from Batu Pahat. Mm -hmm. It's a small town in Johor where there's nothing much happening there. Yes. It's quite boring. And then I first came to KL when I was 18 years old to study mm -hmm. my A-levels. And then when I first came to KL, I was so fascinated by the nightlife in KL. Oh, yeah. And then I started yes. going out every day and party like there's no <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yes. And then as I, as I go to clubs and bars and I always just go to the DJ console and I'm just so amazed by what the DJ is doing and I'll always be the creepy girl who's at the DJ console just like Oh you are? You yeah, were? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just like, what does the button do? Oh my god, I wonder now! And you and were like, what, 19 years yeah, old? Yeah, I was um, 18, like 18, 18. 18. 18. Oh. Okay, and then like fast forward one year after, I decided to sign up to a DJ academy uh. and decided to take proper lessons. Uh, so you signed up when you were still doing A-levels? Um, that at that point, I already passed my A-levels and I was doing my first year degree. In? In law. law. Yes, I was studying yes. law. I wanted to be a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> so you were doing law school and yeah. you went to the DJ Academy. Yes, yes. And at that time, I didn't have a lot of money and I was doing like freelance modeling yeah, 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 I was I doing like a lot of photo shoots. Yeah. yeah, and I earned some money here and there. But yeah. I was really determined to like save up money to pay for my DJ course. So like you knew then that you wanted to be... Actually, no. I learned just as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't intend to like make back the money that I spent on the course. It's really just for like out of curiosity. And okay. Yeah, as a hobby. So you just quit law school? Um, I tried, I tried. Yeah. I really tried. Okay. So, <laughs> law wasn't my interest. My family made me study law. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, I still remember my first year, my exam. Uh -huh. The night before my exam, uh -huh. I actually went for a gig. Oh, so I went you, to you play had a gig. gig then when you were studying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it was a pretty shit gig. Like, <laughs> I didn't get paid that much, but I rather, I still rather go for the gig. Than but still, like, you got started then. And mm. you went for a gig the day before your my exam. exam and then yeah. I failed my exam terribly. Of course you did. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It only totally makes sense. And then after after that, I've uh -huh. got my exam for my contract law. I got 10 out of 100. It was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when okay. I decided, okay, I cannot be a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So like when you got started, like you, like when you quit law school, you didn't know exactly that like DJ is going to be full time, but you just... Mm knew that law school was not for you? Yeah, I knew that law school is not for me. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think that DJ... I didn't think that I'm still going to be a DJ like until today. Okay, yeah. so how was... I guess how did you get to where you are today? How was the journey like for you? Of course, when you first start, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be the star of the night. Your name wouldn't be in the flyer. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have a flyer saying like, "Oh, Melissa Joe is playing the night." You'll just be like the warm up or closing DJ, mm -hmm. and then slowly you get more and more famous, and then you will be the highlight, the star of the night. So you're quite famous on social media right now. I would say your numbers are quite big. If, if we look at just numbers. Mm -hmm. um, Back in the days, was social media already there? Uh, it was, but I think back then Facebook was the main thing rather than Instagram. Okay, and but, how mm. how has social media played a role in your career today? I see social media as a platform okay. to share your work. For okay. example, you just made a mixtape. Instead of just telling everyone, hey, 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 I made a mixtape, here's a CD, you know, we don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You just share, share it on social media. Mm. And, and then you can boost your post so that more people will listen to your mixtape. Social media also serve as a, like a testimonial mm. for your work. Okay. Like say, last night I had a really good gig, it was really really happening. 
and then I want to let people know about it. Yeah. If I just say, hey, last time my gig was great, but yeah. and then how? Uh, how how was it? And then I have my social media. See, it was, this yeah. was the video from last night. Okay. Mm? Yeah, people. So can it's like see that. Mm, and then when clients see that you post videos of your gigs and everything, and then they'll see, oh wow, this this person, this DJ can really like rock the party. I mean, she rocks the party and she promotes your event. Mm. Like I feel like mm -hmm. they see that point too. Like, yeah, I can see that being like kind of like a portfolio. Yes. For for your. Like yes, yes, yes. Actually, business. nowadays, like, um, yeah. when people ask me, like, uh, where do you spin now? What kind of music do you use? I say, mm -hmm. just go to my Instagram. Everything is on my Instagram. Yeah, you have everything on mm. your Instagram. Yeah. Guys, just a shameless plug right here, or not really shameless. Her <laughs> Instagram is MJ in is Vicious. Okay? MJ is Vicious. Yes, MJ is Vicious. Check it out there. <laughs> Alright? <laughs> Okay, so um, we did ask a few questions on Insta Stories and some of you did reply. So I'm just gonna like, you know, bring up the questions and check it out. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the questions was, what challenges did you face when you first started and how did you overcome them? The first and the biggest challenge mm -hmm. was uh, I'm a very nervous person. Like right now, actually, I'm very nervous. <laughs> Relax. And um, I'm a very socially awkward person, and socializing is a big part of this job. Okay. You yeah. have to know people, you have to talk to people because. Mm, you kind of need to sell yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first few years, the first three years, I'll say, I used to get like really bad stomach ache like before oh, my gig. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll go to the toilet like a like hundred times before I go on the stage. Ah, okay. Yeah, but now. Now I'm okay la. So like you would say you overcome it by just keep doing it and yes, repeating it, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you kind of just need to fight through like your fears, whatever mm. problems that you have. Just keep pushing through mm. and you can get there. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second challenge, mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a very Chinese community. I think you can relate as well yeah. because we are both from small town and yeah. people, all, everyone around us speaks Mandarin and listen to Mandarin songs and watch um, Chinese movies and TV shows yeah. and I wasn't exposed to a lot of um, English or like Western urban music ah. so when I first became a DJ mm -hmm. my music knowledge was very limited, limited the only R&B songs that I knew was those like non-stop R&B CD you can oh, buy from yes. Pasar Malam yes. from the night market. I remember the yeah. CD day. It's like yeah. disco, disco non-stop, <laughs> R&B yes. non-stop. Yes. Yeah. How did you get to where you are today? I guess just just have to Google and just have to like uh, go to other DJs gigs and just yeah. like lawatan sampai belajar. That's what I call it. <laughs> I like that lawatan sampai belajar. How do you translate that? Um, you. Field trip, like a field trip field to a trip club. To, yeah, field yeah, trip to a club. Yeah, and I'll just sit down and just listen to what the DJ play and see the crowds respond ah. and just do my homework. Okay, this song works. Okay, this song Damn. doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. You did your homework. Yes, That's yes, cool. You have to do that. And and everyone thinks that your job is just partying. Yes, exactly. Ah, it's so annoying. Exactly. You see, she did her homework. She put in her yeah, hard guys, work inside to get to where she is today. Mm -hmm. Another question that we got here on. Insta stories is what is the best and worst part of being a DJ? Mm, okay, um, I'll start with the worst. <laughs> okay, yeah. And I'll go to the good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think one of the worst is um, your family will always ask you, when are you getting a real job? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because they don't think DJ is a real job. Like they don't think, they don't take DJ seriously. Mm. Mm, and it's not just from uh, family and friends, mm. it's also like people, the customers at the bar or the club, sometimes they also don't take you seriously. Like like once, sorry not once, more than once, the customer just come to me and say, can you help me to order a Jager bomb? Like hey, while, while I'm spinning this, while seriously? I'm spinning, like, hey, and they're like, hey, can I get a Jager bomb please? Like hey, do I look like a bar? <laughs> Wait, really? No, really, really. Seriously? Yeah, hey, they don't. They really, and um, usually <laughs> this usually this comes from the older crowd. Oh, mm. the younger wow. crowd they usually they respect you. Yes, for job, yes, right? they they 
see you as a performer uh -huh. and you're, you're there doing your things this is how you express your art yeah. but older people they'll just think that oh you work in the nightlife <laughs> you're just a girl working in nightlife they get me a Jager bomb. <laughs> wow I'm really surprised yeah. and then there's one more time uh -huh. they, um, this person came to me and asked can I take a picture uh, can, can, can you take a picture he asked me can you take a picture and I just assumed that you want to take picture with me yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's what people always do and then I started posing yeah. and I said no 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 you take a picture for me wow. while I'm working while you I'm were, in like, the DJ spinning, console right? yes 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 <laughs> other than that I think not just DJ I think a lot of other girls get it as well mm. people often like sexualize you uh, yeah. and then uh, you get a lot of harassment yeah. uh, especially at work some customers just think they can just like touch you Ah, mm. uh, you get you you get that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the time all like, the time yeah 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 so yeah. how how do you do with it just you know yeah. just play with it just just move away just try to as uh, I'm working right now like you you were trying to be like professional and not cause a scene too yeah right? yeah so of you course, have to do course. that right mm. wow I mm. hate it <laughs> uh -huh. the feminist in me is just like so uh. and then other than that um I would say health it um. Because as a DJ, you stay up late. Yeah, it's a nightlife thing. Mm, yeah. And then uh, naturally, there will be alcohol and everything. And But alcohol is a choice. No no one forces you to drink. Yeah. So uh, it's, it depends on how you control. Yeah. I guess. But, but, but sleeping late is not good for you. Yeah. It's not good for anyone. Yeah. Mm, so that's one of the worst part. Yeah. And like, I mean, we're going to touch on this later, but she's also a fitness instructor. So like, <laughs> I just don't know how you like juggle between... <clears throat> Like a late night party and mm. a fitness class in a day. But we will talk about that later. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's the worst part. Mm. Let's get into the best part. Okay. I can't, the I can't handle part, the worst part anymore. <laughs> best part, first of all, yeah. the, um, the timing. You make decent amount of money, but your work time is very, very short. Yeah. You only work um, yeah, maximum. Okay, if you are a new DJ, mm -hmm. then maybe you get uh, asked to play like a four to five hour set mm -hmm. but then now I don't do that anymore now I'm just like oh, I only I only want to play for two hours mm -hmm. mm. so you know the money is really good mm -hmm. the time is really flexible I have lots of free time to do other things mm -hmm. which like Wendy just mentioned I'm now do I'm now a fitness instructor yeah mm. and other than that you get to travel a lot mm. Mm. you get That's to nice. travel and then when you um, when say another bar or club in another country is hiring you to play there and yeah. they'll pay for your flight and your hotel yeah mm. what, what are the countries that you've spent before um i've been to mostly just in asia mm -hmm. I've, I've done a tour in china i toured china for a month That's and then so other cool. than that uh, i've played in vietnam yeah macau cambodia yeah. singapore it's mainly asia mm. but that's so yeah. cool though like that's why like when I introduced that I made sure to mention international because like you know there's a lot of small DJs out there who are just like oh I'm a DJ but this girl over here she's international hey, no la, no la. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just being a very proud friend over here and uh, one more thing that I like the, I think that's the thing I like the most about my job mm -hmm. because it's fun it's just fun and you get to meet lots of interesting people that you wouldn't get to meet in daytime maybe it's because like at night after people drink some alcohol and everything the true self come out and everyone become more interesting i don't know but i just meet a lot of interesting like different people yeah your job is just creating like a fun yeah, once, yeah, once yeah, time yeah. for everyone else yeah, so like if you see my social media a lot of people ask me like you're just having fun every day do you even work yeah that's my work ah, <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why there's a quote that says like if you enjoy your work yes you never work a day yeah, yeah. oh that's the life that's the dream <laughs> yes, okay. yes yeah i'm i'm quite happy to say that now i have like both my dream jobs yeah. yeah, both DJ, your dream jobs. Yes, DJ and, and fitness like, instructor. Yeah, and so, fitness. so, so, yeah. Let's get into fitness instructor. Like, okay. so, how how do you juggle between being a fitness instructor and a DJ? Um, because my DJ work is usually just on the weekends. Uh -huh. By by weekends, I I meant from Saturday. Uh, sorry, Wednesday onwards. Mm. Wednesday is a ladies' night, and then yeah. like, 
So yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. I'll be DJing. Yeah. And then Sunday to Wednesday when I'm not do uh sorry. Sunday to Tuesday when I'm not doing anything, mm-hmm. then I can coach. That's so cool. Mm. And like but do you even get rest? Um <laughs> Okay, on weekends if I have to work in daytime mm-hmm. and I have to work at night, I'll mm-hmm. just take interval naps. Oh, that's so yeah. unhealthy though. Yeah, like last week, uh-huh. I had a gig on Friday night and mm. I was spinning until like 1 mm. and then I had to wake up at 6. AM? Yeah, so when I got home, it was already like 2. <gasps> so I just took a 3-4 hour nap and then oh, I go to work. Shit. And then after I come home and I had to attend some other, I had to do some errands. So I didn't get to sleep until like 8 p.m. And I have a gig at 1 a.m. <sighs> So I just took like a 2-3 hour nap, I woke up at like 10 mm-hmm. p.m., 11 p.m., get ready, and I get to work at 1 a.m. <laughs> so it's like a, my sleeping time, sleeping it's, timing is a bit... It's really messed up. Yeah, but, did, but then mm-hmm. when I'm not working, when uh say Sunday to Wednesday, yeah. when I'm not DJing, mm-hmm. I'll try to just get proper 8 hours sleep yeah. and try to eat better yeah mm. and like as a fitness instructor you also need to care about like your health mm. health and also of course you have to take care of how you look yeah mm. as a DJ like she has to kind of sell her look yeah. oh my god it's so much pressure and, and I think look is not just about like face like pretty makeup it's about like you have to look healthy yeah, yeah, you know, look yeah. haggard. What I do is I try to compensate back by eating healthy. Mm. I'll eat a salad uh, whenever I can. Like whenever I can get a chance, I'll mm-hmm. try to eat salad with just some lean protein. Drink lots of water. Eat fruit. So to make sure you get all the nutrients you need. Wow. Because you already sleep so little, and yeah. your sleeping time is all like messed up. Yeah, I guess you kind of made up for yeah. it by making sure your body gets mm. all the nutrients, yeah. although it doesn't get the rest that it needs. Yeah, of course this is not the best. Like, of course the ideal way will be like get enough sleep and... Yeah, you know, but that, that's that's not how mm. the world works, man. Like, yeah. Oh. And, <laughs> and I can't believe that people are like your family members, they don't take you seriously and they, they don't think that this is a full-time job. Mm-hmm. Man, <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> uh, I, I guess it takes some time for the older people yeah, to, to get the mindset, right? Mm. Finally, this year's Chinese New Year, finally mm-hmm. they stopped asking me that. Finally, they stopped asking me, when are you getting a real job? They finally accepted that, okay, this is her job. One thing that I always hear is that there is an expiry date to a DJ's career. Mm. Um, are you concerned about that? What's, what's your thought about it? Uh, if you ask me this question like one year ago, mm-hmm. I would say, yes, I'm afraid there's an expiry date for me. Mm-hmm. And back then, I used to think that uh, I can only be a DJ up until like I'm 30 years old. Ah. And then because after 30 years old, you'll start looking, you know, you'll start Older. getting old, you, you don't have that much energy anymore. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I used to think. Uh-huh. But now I think that as long as you keep yourself healthy mm. and keep yourself up to date with the latest trend and music, keep yourself looking young, yeah. and then, uh, yes, as long as you stay relevant in the scene, mm. then I think I can do this job for, for as long as, long as, as I want. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. I mean, honestly, the key point of this job is like how you're able to play good music to engage with the crowd. Mm. It shouldn't be about how you look, but it kind of does. It kind of does. But Looking good, of course, is a fo- uh, is a bonus. It's a bonus yeah. to attract the crowd, but really, it's it's about your job. Mm, it's about the music. The music. Uh, fashion. I th- I think also play a big part. Yeah. But music. Uh, you have to keep up to the new music yeah. because people get old and mm. eventually they stop partying, and then the new kids will start partying. Yeah. So the majority of the people in the bar or in the club are the young kids, yeah. and you need to know what are the young people listening to. Yeah. So as long as you keep yourself up to date, uh, keep yourself uh, relevant. Yeah. And then I think I can do this job. Yeah. Well, as long as I want. I mean, so, there's yeah. no really expiry date. Yeah, and I'm glad that you felt that way. Because mm. I think rem- I remember like meeting you maybe like last year. Or last mm. year. You were so stressed about what's yeah. next for you. Mm. But I mean, the fact that you are comfortable now, it helps you to like just keep upping your game in DJing. Mm-hmm. Which 
makes it even better for you because you're gonna keep growing and growing. Yeah, because back then there was this um, female DJ craze, uh, you know, and uh, then suddenly everyone is a DJ and they always dress so sexy uh, to play, yeah. and then that's when. Um, looks really play a big role mm. Mm. and that's when I thought oh my god one day when I'm old I cannot do this anymore oh, no. because looks is everything yeah. but now I realize where are those DJs now they are not in the scene anymore they are not relevant anymore yeah. yeah and what about like fitness like do you I understand that you just recently got into fitness like mm. as an instructor do you think that's also going to be like your long term career thingy Um, I think I'll coach as as long as I can, then I will. I like working out, mm-hmm. and I like to make other people work out. Yeah, she forces me to work out sometimes. <laughs> and that's like, eh. I mean, I work out, but uh, she's too intense for she's me. She's a yoga person. Yeah, I'm more of a namaste oh. yoga person. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, one more, give me one more, come on. <laughs> yeah, she, she's a really like a circuit hardcore kind of person. It's just not my kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess that kind of brings us to almost the end. But I have one last question for you. Mm-hmm. Which which is a question that everyone asks, but it's not really relevant to your job. Mm-hmm. It's how many tattoos do you have? Uh, I actually don't know. But how many? What's the number when you last counted it? I really don't know, because it's very hard to count. Because like this sleeve, yeah. it will be considered as one. One. Yeah. And then I have like a full leg sleeve sock, whatever yeah. on my leg, and that's considered one. Yeah. So it. Which makes the number small. Mm. But she does have. Yeah, I think the more accurate way to ask is how many percent, how much percentage yeah, so of your body is it's tattooed. tattooed. Yeah. And, and what's the answer then? Um, what do you think? I don't know. Fifty. Uh, no, no, it's la. more than fifty. No. Yeah. 50%? 60? 60, 60, at least 60% of her <laughs> yeah, body. Sorry, I really don't know how many tattoos I have. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that brings us to the end of the interview. We hope we answered the questions that you have in your mind and you enjoyed this. Be sure mm-hmm. to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if mm-hmm. you do enjoy. And follow MJ here on her Instagram because like we said, it's going to be really interesting for you to see. <laughs> I will see you in my video next week. See ya! Bye! Be sure to check out these two videos. Alright? Bye!